four more local government areas and six local council development areas have been added to the ban placed on the operations of commercial motorcycles popularly known as Okada in Lagos State. The Commissioner for Transportation, Frederick Oladende, hinted during a press briefing on phase two of the total ban on motorcycle operations in the state. Plus TV News correspondent, Lobby Kukoyedoko, reports. It all began three months ago. Operations of commercial motorcyclists were restricted in six local governments and nine local council development areas in Lagos. According to the government, the move is to curtail the growing menace and security threats posed by some of the riders. Four more local government areas and six local council development areas have now been added to the ban list effective from September 1. Based on the apparent positive impact of the ban and the resolution of the stakeholder forum, Mr. Governor has approved the ban of Okada in another four local government areas and six LCDAs for the second phase of the total ban, in addition to the ongoing ban in the six local government and their respective LCDs. These local government and their respective LCDs are as follows. Number one, Kuchafe local government with the following LCDs. Ikosi Isheri LCDA and Aguiketu LCDA. Number two, Oshudi Sono local government with Isolo LCDAs and Ejibu LCDAs. Number three, Shomonu local government with Bariga LCDA. And number four, Mushi local government with Udi Unuru LCDA. The commissioner advised residents to make use of alternative means of transportation to go about via daily activities. He enjoins residents to access government's existing interventions aimed at empowering them. Beginning of the administration, we uh, started the reform of the bus scheme so that people can actually ride, you know, the, our buses uh, with clean suits and still come out with clean suits, etc. We have upgraded uh, the water transport uh, mode. Uh, there are more boats on our waters. Mr. Governor has invested in 16 terminals, etc. We are ramping up the real uh, project in a bid to ensure that we give people alternatives. Now, the Canada riders themselves, they have uh, a right to join this uh, first mile and last mile uh, buses as, as owners. Yes. They come together as uh, members of a community. They can go in there and apply to own the buses. And the buses will be given to them on instrumental uh, basis that they will be paid. So it is uh, a system that is very easy for them to, to join. And in actual fact, some of them have come forward to say that they would like to join. And uh, Lamata is working with them to ensure that uh, they are part of the scheme. Security agents and other law enforcement formations within the state have been put on alert to enforce the fresh ban. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Uyeduku, Plus TV News. We're now being joined now by public affairs analyst, Mr. Adeniye Kuno. Mr. Kuno, good evening to you. Yeah, good, e good evening to you. Thank, I can hear you very clearly. Thank you for thank joining you. us on News Now. Now, what do you make of government's decision to have a total ban of the popularly known motorcycle um, uh, riders or CADA in Lagos. You know, the government has given instances of threats to security in the state of perceived nuisance by, by the riders. And of course, we know that some residents have also raised alarm over um, the operations of um, commercial motorcyclists. What do you make of it? I think in my candid opinion, it's uh, actually a cosmetic approach to providing solution. Uh, when the first ban was made possible, May the 18th of this month, for the first couple of days, we saw policemen uh, all around Lagos, even in some areas that were not mentioned. They prevented motorcycles from you know, driving on highways. 
And, um, you know, the enthusiasm with which that was met just abated and fizzled out. And we appear to have them back on our major highways stronger than ever before. Do not forget that there is an economy for importers when we talk about motorcycles. And you cannot really uh, prevent people from wanting to move from point A to point B. And you also cannot prevent people from creating an economy for themselves. So whatever it is the government is doing with banning them uh, uh, should be really looked at. Because the same government is the collector of all the monies, mainly all the monies across the local governments that have been mentioned, uh, regarding, you know, more or less the ticket they get every money. So I want to say that the best thing for the government to do is to actually look at more holistic ways of dealing with this issue. The first of that would be harnessing um, the water potential of Lagos and provide you know, very effectively water transportation across the nooks and crannies of our waterways, uh, building more jetties. Once you do not make Okada riding attractive to those that patronize them, it makes life better. Uh, the Netherlands is 12 feet below sea level. They do more of bicycles if you've been to Amsterdam, apart from other places. It means, therefore, that the country, particularly the state, must leverage its potential. Water, water covers more parts of Lagos than the land space. And the Lagos state government, in its over about 53, 54 years of existence as a state, has not been able to evolve that. And I think it's something we should look into. So whatever it is they've done before, for instance, I've had to drive extra carefully uh, going on the lagos Badagro Expressway, even some parts of other areas, even the shomoli Barriga areas, the Kuskofe areas, because they're everywhere. Do not forget that apart from being transportation, well, the people that are doing it really believe they could make quick money just actually to take care of their families. So it means therefore that what is Lagos doing, apart from banning, to prevent people from getting into you know, criminal acts if they are prevented from riding these motorbikes. The reason why the state government has decided for it to be banned is because we seem to have an incremental, uh, you know, incremental incidences of crimes committed by those who ride on bikes. And the Lagos state government, on the one hand, is justified to do that. But on the other hand, what about the fact that they are disempowering people? Don't forget that there was an uproar uh, uh, about a, a fortnight ago or about three weeks ago where the lawmakers at the federal level actually agreed that the federal government cannot ban the use of motorbikes across the country. It is an economy that empowers the state one way or the other. But in disempowering people, what are the alternatives we've created? So this is a very complex conversation where the state government makes use of a high-handedness, justifiably too because it takes responsibility for insecurity, but on the other hand, we may have more crimes on our hands if there is no alternative of doing this. And I think that uh, the Lagos State government must be up in its game to deal with these issues, please. I think I agree with you uh, um, at this point where it, many say that it's like throwing the bath water and the baby away. Because yeah. in dealing with e issues like this, um, those who are in the hinterland or places where, you know, the, the, it's not very motorable, may want to say the Okada riders are the best for them at this point. So what do you think the, the government should have put in place? In, in the first place, what makes, what makes Okada riding attractive? It's that the solution, let, let's, 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 go, let's, let's do some economics now. When value is provided, and the value provided is optimal, the patronage for such value is of the best and in its numbers. Okada has been able to provide value for people who have worked all day and want to get to their families in good time. Let us check the road infrastructure. The Lagos to Badabi Road has been under construction since Fashola, and Ambodi has come and gone. Fashola used eight years, and I'm going to use four, 12. Uh, Babaji Sonwood is going to use another four. So that's going to be about 16 years, where a road that should be less than about maybe, it says 60 kilometers per hour, maybe it's in excess of 120 kilometers, has been left unattended for the past 16 years. The harrowing experiences of those that are commuting 
from Maozu or maybe from Alabasuru all the way to Badagri could not be documented. It therefore means that when you as government uh, as demonstrated, you know, arguable incapacity to deliver mm. on your terms of reference, which of course uh, forms road infrastructure, water, and many other sort of social um, needful, then the people have to find a way around it. And if it's where to be in a country where people are really civilized, they would have taken the government to court and won fair and square because taxpayers' money goes into most of the work being done. But on your round, you've not been able to provide that. And people have decided to take their destinies in their hands. Very well, it is dangerous because you're exposed if there's any collision. And any accidented motorcycle could actually make somebody become uh, disempowered for life, lose a limb or so. I agree in principle. But at the same time, when people take office, they have terms of reference. And the terms of reference should be priority. Over the course of the time that the federal government has not been able to, the, the state government has not been able to do its part of those rules because let's just leave the federal government alone. If over the years the state government has not been able to fix that, perhaps in the area of collaborating with the federal government to solve the problem of, of infrastructure, how then do you expect people? You don't expect people to fold their arms. For instance, we talk about employment, which of course is some of the things that we feel government should have answers to. If government doesn't have room for people to get employed, if electricity is not available for people to have private businesses, yet government takes people to the cleaners to collect taxes or increase it, then when the people revolt, they said it is insubordination or lawlessness. So government should have a human face in this kind of situation where it understands that we have not done the best we could for these people let us think. No, September the, one, the September the first is less than two weeks ago. What I think government should have done is to tell them that these are blueprints one, two, three, four, five for you to stop Okada riding between now and December of 2022. By the first week, maybe after people have digested their Christmas or New Year rice or food, maybe by the sixth or seventh, we don't want to see any motorbikes on this road you would have given a very justifiable period of time for you to ban them outrightly and take punitive action. Thank you Don't so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Kunu. Oh, thank you so oh, much oh, oh, oh. Uh, because of our thank time. You. But I must say thank okay, you, thank you for, for your comments. And of course, I, I, do, I do understand that the government is working with stakeholders in, the, in that sector to see that they are empowered. We hope that the, the, the ban would um, make sense for the state. We also want to see that plan out in public domain so that people like us can talk about it, that government has provided alternative. That's in, right. In balancing of conversation. Thank you. That's right. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much and have a pleasant night. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.